She's the star of the Netflix hit docuseries, Bad Surgeon. She brought the most despicable doctor ever to walk on the face of the earth down. Her name is Benita Alexander. She joins us on One Degree of Scandalous with the one and only Kato Kalen. I'm Tom much. Zenner. Welcome, everybody. Well, Tom, as a matter of fact, for this special episode, you gave me your coat to wear. So I'm wearing Tom Zenner's jacket here. And thank you for giving. I didn't even know you did heroin. What is this? So, oh, it's a, I'm sorry. No, but I haven't I, wore that jacket you in three vape? years. So I'm off heroin now. Oh, good. It's over. Good. It's I over. just found this in your pocket. What's going on? Busted. Jeez. Speak I wore his coat and now, the, oh, is it knock at the door? Police, come in. No, I'm <laughs> Speaking kidding. Speaking of Thomas scandal, Ray. right? Tom's an athlete. Hey, by the way, you look better than that than I do. So, hey, welcome everybody. So glad you could join us. Great episode. Uh, it's one of the hot documentaries on Netflix right now. It's called Bad Surgeon. Maybe you've seen it. She was also the star of the other one called He Lied About Everything. And we had, yeah. we had her on our show last year. It's great. But we're going to continue the conversation today. Right. You watch uh, you watch episode one. You'll be hooked. You'll watch episode two mm -hmm. and three. It's three episodes. Uh, Bad Surgeon on Netflix. It's like our show. You watch one of our podcasts. You'll want to watch the rest of it. And you should, too, on YouTube. Yeah. And you know what? It's Well, Netflix does such a great job with their documentary. By the way, they're killing it in the streaming wars right now. They've pretty much won it. Um, they're, they're dominating. And Cato is going to be on a Netflix documentary this year, too. But the backstory is so unbelievable. He's this world famous surgeon that created this fake trachea, right? This artificial trachea that he dipped in stem cells and fooled the whole world that this would actually work. And the only thing it did is cause pain, suffering and tortured these people to death. They put them in. They inject. They put these things in. And he worked for the most respected hospital in Europe which is just insane. So this guy is a psycho. He's a con man of the highest order. He's a, he's a predator. And, and the backstory of how he conned Benita into following in love with him and then promising her that the Pope was going to marry them, right. that they're going to get married in a castle. Elton John was going to be there. The Clintons were going to be there. Barack Obama was going to be there. Oprah was going to be there. John Legend was going to sing just on and on yep. and on. He's the, he is the con of all cons. And uh, we have uh, we Benita Alexander on our show, yeah. and she is terrific. And her story is so compelling. Okay, no, I, I can't get away with a damn thing. Like yeah. I, in my house, anyway. I, I'm bu five seconds. I'm busted on anything, much smaller than what Paolo Mascarelli does. Watch what he does and how he does it. Maybe you get some tips. Do you get away okay. with anything? No, of course not. I do some, you know, he does these love videos. I do some love videos to my wife. But that's sure. a positive thing. Yeah, it's very positive. You know, you're not but sending my... it out to five different people like he did. No, 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 I don't. <laughs> I only have one phone, too. <laughs> this guy had five, I he think. He did. Oh, the story's just truly incredible. And it's, it's a, this is going to be a great episode when we bring Benita in from uh, from the East Coast here. But hey, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Follow us on on in, on uh, on all the social media channels. We got the social media clips going throughout the week and, and you know, great guests coming up. We're going to have Billy McFarlane from the Fire Festival coming up. And then just you name the scandal from Epstein, Millie Vanilli, Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, the biggest scandals. And we got a big twist in the OJ situation, too. Yeah. I've got a big guest coming up in the next two or three weeks. That's uh, he was the photographer that was actually in the house during the chase. The only photographer, the only journalist that was actually in the house uh, on Rockingham oh. <laughs> just by chance. So he's got some legendary photos. Well, but this I, is going to be a great. Story what I wonder me. about this one is I want to see how Benita's doing now. And if she's with a man now and who knows, maybe she's found love. Could you imagine you, you you'd have to really be a little leery about dating someone again. So that's a good one. Let's let's yeah, ask let's her. See, yeah, let's, let's find out. All right. You ready? Let's, Should we bring her in? Let's meet her. Quick break. We're back with Benita Alexander. All right, Cato. Well, look, that was one of the highlights of the year for me last year. When we broke this story, when we we gave Benita a platform and let her tell this this story that nobody knew at the time. So kudos to us. You know? Yeah, I, so I watched the documentary. I'm, so many people probably have, but I watched it this time with my wife and she was Benita's a huge fan. Yeah. It's just what you went through. And she, I'm just telling you, and I'm sure you hear that a lot. Uh, Probably from male and female, but probably predominantly women to what you've yeah. gone through. And Benita, yeah. welcome to the show. By the way, I didn't break the story. I watched oh, yeah. I watched He Lied About Everything on Hulu, was blown away. That's how you and I met and you joined yeah. us on the show last year. It was awesome. And so much has happened since then. I don't know if I you know. told us about the Netflix. Did you did you tell I, us or no? Did you have to keep it on the down low last I did. summer? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So. Wow. Well done. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. 
Yeah, it's great to see you. My God. And of course, we're talking, Cato, about bad surgeon. Yeah, of course. Like I said, and Benita, I, you, I don't know how you do it, what you went through, how you actually look younger. How do you do it? <laughs> Thank you. With the... <laughs> Benita, you've been a, a world traveler. I mean, you yeah. do a Netflix doc. It's it, it's a really the big time. So I guess walk us through it. Um, we're going to get into the story. This is Bad Surgeon, the Paolo Macarali story, the doctor. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people know the story by now. Um, and there's so much new ground to cover on this. But God, let's just start with you and your life, how it's changed in the last year and a half. Because uh, when we talked, you know, that's when the Hulu thing had been out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And and then you knew about this, but you couldn't say anything. But now what's been the reaction to the three part documentary on Netflix? The reaction has been amazing, actually. And it's I'm, yeah. I mean, it's Netflix. It's all over the world. So that's a difference. None of the other stories I had told or documentaries had that big of a hit. Right. And so that's been both incredible and overwhelming. Um, I still can't keep up with all the messages that are coming in from literally all over the world. I think it was number one in 80 countries in the first week or two, which is just nuts. Mm -hmm. But it's great. I think they did a really good job. And I think it paints a really chilling picture of just how evil this man is. How about the lighting in that thing? You looked so good. The color ah, purple. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, they man, they, they leave no things to chance when Netflix comes in. By the way, Cato is going to have a little taste of that here soon you this are? summer it's the 30 year anniversary of the oj uh oh, you wow. know saga yes. so you can imagine where kato wow. he's gonna be all over this year yeah this netflix goes all you know all out and they yeah. I'm, like they did with you they just uh, they wanted to have the best product out there yeah and 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 by the way were you approached by netflix or did you approach them are they aware of you because obviously this could not be done without you you are the centerpiece of this uh, i think of the documentary you're, you're the the big standout thank you it's well, it's done. It's produced by a production company, Notopia, mm. out of um, they're actually out of Britain. And they approached me about doing the documentary. They had pitched Netflix and then they approached me about participating. Um, and one of the reasons I decided to participate is because I was a consulting producer. I wasn't directly involved in the production, but I did have, you know, some say in in things. And I was able to see the final script, at least of my parts, and talk about what was going to be in the documentary. But I think. Utopia did a really, really good job. You know, they were yeah. very thorough. Yeah. They spent a long time. I mean, they interviewed me for, and I'm not joking, I think probably 40 hours or something in total. Yeah. You know, so. Wow. You, you did a great job. Just, you know, when you needed emotion, so descriptive. You, you, you could tell that you're polished as far as you know how to add the dramatic element to some of these lines and it just yeah. like, takes it to a new level and, and you're just like riding there with you, you know, you're yeah. getting chills on some of this. Yeah. I think, I think that reason is because she was reliving it while the documentary, while they're asking you questions you can see in your mind and the pain that it caused. And it comes out because I think when you're asked a question about something from what happened to you with uh, Paulo, you just, you relive it and then you get your emotions yeah. come through. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. funny when you watch this, too, that this is over a decade ago or about a decade, because, you know, we think about your daughter as being so young because there was a lot of video that she was in. Right. right. That was taken. By, by the way, the fact that you had so much B-roll, so much video from phones, it just you couldn't have done this in the same way. I mean, it's unbelievable that there was that much footage. Right. Because the surgeries he did, they all were media grabbing attention. Um, you, too. You know, either you yeah. or he was filming a lot in the personal life, and that that made a hell of a difference too. Yeah, and we're gonna go right back into the documentary, but I have a question because if I don't want to forget this question because Tom yeah. made me think of this. Now, uh, your Netflix documentary happened. Now, there's a I think it's a Peacock series called Doctor Death. Yep. Now, is that series because of you? Is it because they saw the documentary? Um, and are, do you have any involvement in that? Because it's basically someone's playing you, correct? Yeah, so Dr. Death is based on the podcast, Dr. Death, which is done by Wondery, which I participated mm -hmm. in. I feel like it was during the pandemic, maybe 2021, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, um, which I was heavily involved in. I am I think there are seven parts and I'm all throughout it. I'm the main you know, interviewee in it. I gave them all the other people that spoke. And actually, I even worked for Dr. Death as a correspondent when I went to cover his trial in Sweden in 2022. Um, However, Peacock, which also had made a scripted series based on the first season of the Dr. Death podcast, they, That's what I was talking, yeah. for whatever reason, um, decided they did not want to involve me in this and that I was not involved at all. I was not consulted at all. Okay. Um, which is wow. 
just bizarre to have somebody playing yeah. you and you yeah <laughs> dr death the first one was dear uh dirty john right the guy in orange uh, county no, christopher, oh man christopher dunch or whatever his name is. was it yeah okay okay oh the anyway podcast so or the, anyway yeah yeah. Well, so Peacock has Dr. Death and Mandy Moore played Benita, yeah. pop singer and Vinny Chase's girlfriend in Entourage. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams you'd have Mandy Moore playing you in a movie? No, pretty crazy. I mean, it's crazy. The whole thing's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, actually, she she dated Ryan Adams for a long time. The singer oh, yeah. who I who I like. I yeah. mean, that with not being involved at all, you had to have a lot of apprehension when you watch that thing. This did they get it right? Was this even close to being how I lived through this in real life. What were your thoughts when you watched it? You know, it took me a while to watch it because I was kind of afraid to watch it because I was, I knew they took creative liberties. I mean, it's dramatized fiction, so they can do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, they, it's a mix, you know, I think overall they did a very good job. They do a very, very good job with the, the medical stuff. And, you know, that's what's important is portraying him to be the evil, dangerous, you know, con man that he is and, killing people it's bizarre to watch something you know about yeah. yourself yeah. um there are things that they you know get it wrong. was interesting but because i saw the first one which mm -hmm. i didn't know how they could do it any better or i didn't know if there could be more to the story and netflix found a way to do it right with a three-part episode but there was so much yeah. that we didn't see in the first one. There was so much more to that story. And that involved, you know, some of his coworkers, some of these fellow doctors yeah. in Sweden that saw this, that yeah. saw the red flags. They had to go crazy when they, I mean, this is, a re this is the equivalent of the Mayo Clinic, basically, here in the United States, yeah. right? A very, yeah. very respected hospital where yeah. the, the Nobel Prize for Medicine comes out of. Exactly. And, you know, and you could just, you wrap your arms around this for over a decade, Benita. It, the most fascinating and unbelievable thing is he got away with this, is that the hospital was almost complicit in this, knew what was going on, but had to protect him for their reputation. Is that is that fair? Is that accurate? Yeah, look, I think what happened with Karolinska, which is the place that awards the Nobel Prize in medicine, mm -hmm. which is where he was employed, okay. For them, I think it's very parallel to what was going on in a lot of other areas of his life, which is why he kept getting away with this. Nobody wanted to believe that Dr. Paolo Maccherini was not who they thought he was. For them, it was a very, very inconvenient truth, right? You've got money attached to this man. You've got grants, you know, talking about building a whole center around him, all this prestige. He's rumored to be in contention for a Nobel Prize himself. You know, I, I think at the beginning, it was a lot easier for people to try and, you know, sweep it under the rug because nobody wanted to believe that he wasn't who they thought he was. Yeah, that's another question that I would, you know, the doctors that are interviewed, the surgeons and the uh, scientists that are interviewed in the documentary, you the, not that they're complicit, but they've got to be thinking that this guy is is after the first one goes bad, the bot surgery, they've got to be thinking this isn't working out. This isn't uh, uh, this whole stem cell. And, and so what blows me away is that even though they're on camera, when did I wanted to know when they had that first feeling of Paulo is just, he's he, he's not real. I so I, was, I was trying to get that. Yeah. Yep. I think, I think it was a gradual process. So that's something actually they do very well in the in the Peacock series. They fictionalized it. They you know, there are three whistleblowers and one's a woman. And that's not true. But the actual process of what happened, this sort of slow realization that this guy is a fraud. And I think that's what mm. happened with everybody, you know, you because at first it's so shocking. You don't want to believe it. And mm -hmm. he's so convincing, you know, he's such a skilled pathological yeah. liar. And he's so yeah. good at convincing people that he's not lying, that it takes, you know, a long time and a lot of determination and digging to really prove that he is. And those whistleblowers are so brave. I mean, they really put their necks on the line, you know, and they, yeah. they yeah. got dragged into the police station and interviewed. They got threatened of losing for, for losing their jobs. Right. I mean, it's classic whistleblowing. You know, the whistleblower is the one trying to do the right thing. And the whistleblower is the one who's paying the price. Yeah. And you can see in the documentary, uh, Tom, when that, um, when he's getting in trouble, you can you can see the the, the fluster in his face, but yeah. you can also see his brain working, going, "How can I use yes. Benita? How can I oh, get yeah. Benita? She's so powerful in the media. Exactly. I can convince her." And his you you can see it in that exactly. how he's going to use you. And yep. I don't think you saw it yet, but you start figuring it out. Of 
wait, I think this guy's using me because yeah. I know that you've got the power of NBC. You've in. got mm -hmm. you can make it. You can make everything better for him. Yeah, I think in hindsight, unequivocally, he targeted me from the very beginning. You know, I think when I when I met him, right, the world still thought he was the super surgeon. That was his nickname, and he walked on water. And here was this man who was doing something so admirable and so revolutionary. Nobody knew yet that behind the scenes, everything was imploding, but he knew, right? He had to know that this was all gonna come caving in at some point because patients were dying. He was still at that point able to cover up by claiming that people always die when you do something experimental. The families at that time were still supporting him. Karolinska is still supporting him, but he had to know the clock was ticking. So I think he met me and he thought, okay, there's a smart journalist. I'm going to get her in my back pocket. I'm going to make her fall in love with me. And when the shit hits the fan, right. she's going to, she's going to support me. She's going to defend me. You know, I think that's, mm -hmm. it was that targeted. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, what's interesting is because really the guy has three skills. He is a skilled surgeon. Mm -hmm. He's a salesman or a marketer and he's a predator yeah. and he's equally skilled at all three of them. Right. And you could see the grooming process. Yeah. And what we learned in that documentary with Netflix that was different than the Hulu one was, how about the first victim, the child in Italy? And then he ends up having a, a, a relationship with, with the mother. Yeah. I mean, and then got her to love him even wow. after her child died. And you know what? This when, when he when he was working with his a stem cell infused windpipe transplant. Translation, an empty Pepsi bottle shaped in a Y, right? That had a right. shelf life of a maybe what six months. But it's not just death, it's a horrible death. No, it's These awful. people suffered, they were he tortured. And he to death. And he was done with them. As soon as the surgery was over, he was on to the next one. Yeah, he didn't care. He's reckless. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing, he, he might as well have been putting a plastic straw into people's throats. And it. Right. I, be, I believe he knew from the beginning that it was never going to work. It had no chance of working. I mean, this idea that stem cells could <coughs> magically integrate into this plastic tube and, you know, become a functioning organ was ludicrous. But he convinced people that it could work. And it, you know, it started rotting in their in in, in their throats. I mean, it's horrible. They, it, they were suffocating to death, and they they smelled because this thing is rotting inside their throats. It's it's just beyond awful. What and you get angry watching it. I get angry that they had no guinea pig. There was no sample. They didn't test. They tested it on humans. So you're mad at yourself, going, "Well, didn't any of the other surgeon, the the scientists, go? Let's see the data. Let's see what what did you test on? Or or is this guy such a great liar that he didn't need to? He convinced them. No, this will work. I, that's what blows me. I, I was so so upset at these yeah. at what the pain that the people went through but of I think uh, this losing. Is this is exactly what a, a very skilled con artist does. And that's why there are so many important lessons here, right? Because he walks the walk, he talks the talk, you know, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's savvy, you know, he seems to be exactly, or seemed to be exactly who he said he was. So unfortunately people didn't question him, you know, people didn't check his resume. People didn't check to see if he'd done the animal experience, which he did none, you know, none. He skipped yeah. all the steps. He didn't do anything that he was supposed to do. Yeah, he just kind of came in like a rock star. And then yeah. you just assume every, you know, he's like, he's cre he's making miracles. Miracles are happening around him. You know, the one unsatisfying thing about the first one, which is different from the Netflix, is you watch it and you want some sort of resolution. You yeah. want this guy in jail. Yeah. You want him to be held accountable. And right. really, it wasn't. And you go, what does it take to lose your medical license in Europe? I mean, it's basically like being in L.A. where you can knock over a Brinks truck in the morning, rob a Chanel store in the afternoon, and it's the equivalent of jaywalking, basically. You can get away with anything here right now, under nine, sadly. Under nine fifty. Yeah, under $950. <laughs> but there was a little bit of an advancement of the story in the Netflix. And, and then actually something happened after it, yeah. you know, you got done taping it. So why don't you give us the update of where the good doctor is right now? So in 2022, he was on trial. I went to Sweden for the trial. He was on trial for a month. That was interesting. That's a whole nother story because that's the first time I'd seen him um, in whatever it was, eight, seven years or something at that point. And wow. he was found guilty on only one count on that trial of bodily harm in connection with the death of one patient, this Turkish girl who had 200 plus surgeries. You see it in bad surgeon, it's horrific. So then he appealed that, both the prosecution and the defense appealed that. So this May, in, or last May in 2023, it was in the appeals court in Sweden. I went to that trial as well. And, you know, to his surprise, they not only um, did not hold up the original verdict, now they found him guilty on all count, all three patients of bodily harm. So 
and it sentenced him to 30 months behind bars. So he appealed again all the way to the Supreme Court in Sweden. Just last October, the Supreme Court came back and said, yeah, no, we're not taking the case that, you know, this stands. So he's, he's out of moves. It's game over. He has to serve 30 months behind bars. What's frustrating and so telling about how narcissists work, this was in October. Here we are in January. He's still not behind bars. What? He is, he is trying to negotiate with Sweden to serve his time in Spain, where he lives on house arrest. So he wants to sit by his damn pool and with his feet up, looking over at the ocean and serve his time that way, which is just insane. And he's giving interviews. He just gave an interview over the weekend to Italian TV and saying all this crazy stuff. And it's just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get how you kill people and then you're you get even though 30 months isn't enough and you're walking around doing interviews and trying to serve your time by the pool so he's out on parole basically he's been sentenced but he hasn't started to serve it yeah this is unbelievable Has, has he lost his medical license no so that's the interesting thing it doesn't work the same way as it does in the u.s in europe right any country that will allow him or permit him to you know do surgeries there or, or practice medicine, he still can. It's a country by country thing. I think hopefully, especially after Netflix and all the international worldwide attention, that will become harder and harder for him. I don't oh. can't imagine any place that wants to hire him, much less a patient and wants to be in his hands, right? But technically, yes, he can still practice medicine. And in fact, one of the things I found out last year, which was really interesting, is he kept saying in court that he was flat broke, he hadn't been able to work, you know, woe is me, poor me. Well, right. during the right up until the pandemic, he was working on a cruise ship as the head doctor. Like, oh, love, I thought, yeah, love boat. I style. thought it was doing magic show or something. <laughs> you, I thought you meant when you said the entertainment stage. I, I was thinking bartender, yeah. like cruise director or something like a Julie yeah. McCoy on love boat. Yeah, yeah he, was, <laughs> you know? he was love boat. And that was very smart because in international waters, you know, the law is harder to prove. And also, oh, nobody, that's true. He, he was going to Turkey and Asia. Nobody knew who he was. Oh my so, God. Oh my. He, but he, he's a step what, ahead of everybody. I mean, is, it's unbelievable. It is, it's amazing too how he, uh, uh, the, the thing is, if you've got, by the way, people that are watching our show, you have to, wa- you've got to watch Bad Surge on Netflix. He would do these videos. He would do these videos where he didn't mention names and he would just look in, in the camera going, hey, baby, I just want you to know I'm thinking just of you. And the morning is now and I just wish I was in bed next to you. But I have to settle for my pillow, and he would go and send that to you and to whoever else. And you and you you explain that he's got like five phones, yeah. and for him, you know now hindsight, this guy's doing that to everybody without mentioning a name. He's throwing these mm-hmm. these these uh, <clears throat> things that he uh, of uh, love little, love yeah. little love message video messages that are just mm-hmm. after you know the story, you just laugh and you go. This guy is so full of it. He's <laughs> just so worst. full of it. Yeah. Well, the woman the, in the in the third episode um, of Bad Surgeon, the woman that comes out, uh, Anna Paula in Italy, who you mentioned, yeah. she had a. I mean, that story is so upsetting. She basically he operated on her son. It wasn't one of the plastic right. tracheas. It was some other kind of trachea operation. And he dies. He's young. He's in his early twenties. There is an investigation in Italy. He's facing manslaughter charges. So what does he do? He goes and and seduces his mother so that she doesn't pursue the manslaughter charges and then gets her pregnant and has a baby with her. That baby right. was born at the same time that he was proposing to me, by the way. Um, so this that was family number four that he had going on at the same time. And she, had, she actually yep. contacted me after I first went public in 2016. And I've never spoken about her because mm-hmm. I was protecting her. And I, felt, I feel terrible for her because she's got this child. So she was really brave to come forward and Mm -hmm. now he's going on italian tv trying to claim that the child is not his and even though the child has his last name and also that she and i somehow colluded and i convinced her to claim that the child is his and create this whole story it's just he's just it's just nuts it's just god he just never stops easy to find out with dna what they could do how about now is is the wife that he uh, when you went to uh, with your friends to spain and your friends, you know, dropped off the bottle of wine when you watch this in the documentary. Is he still with that woman? Uh, no. So there there were, and there's a lot of confusion about that. People think that yeah. when I went to the house was the first time I figured out that he was married and that that was his wife of 30 years from Italy. It wasn't. I knew he was separated when I met him. He told me he got divorced, which I found out wasn't true. He never actually got mm-hmm. divorced. But there are four families that I know of. 
It was me and my daughter in the U.S. In Italy, he had this wife that he'd been separated from for many years with two older kids. In Spain, there's another wife and two young kids. And then there's Anna Paula in Italy and another child. So four families and five children that we know about at the same time. Well, I'll tell you a great uh, you know follow up to this would be uh, Netflix following up on the kids and what they're going through about their, know, if they, so if they say, them. if they consider him as the dad or not, or what, you know, if other people, other kids, yeah. yeah if the other kids know that's the dad, Terrible. it's like, ugh. you know, the other thing that struck me too, when you're watching this thing is he's got like this unlimited amount of funds where he can just fly across the country, yeah. homes everywhere, dinners. And you had mentioned this in the first time you joined us last year that there was some Russian money, right? There was grant money from the Russian government, Putin, maybe one of Putin's black cards, I'm not sure. But that, is there any comeuppance there? Like, I would imagine this has gotten back to the Kremlin, back to Moscow. I mean, it's, he was funding this a little bit, wasn't he? The Russian government, weren't they behind some of this? I can't prove that, but it, it seems to make sense. And more and more, I mean, everybody says, everybody questions where his money was coming from. He wasn't making that much as a, an assistant professor professor at Karolinska. And he had this very lucrative multi-million dollar grant in Russia to do some of these surgeries in Russia and to do research. And he always paid for everything with a Russian credit card. So I fully believe that he stole that grant money and that's how he funded all these romantic ventures. And you see in, in Bad Surgeon, okay. that's one of the ironies that the Anna Paula, we the lost. woman in Italy. Oh, there's better. She's talking about he was doing exactly the same things with her that he was doing with me, you know, flying mm -hmm. all over the place, whining and dining. And yeah, I think he used Russian money to pay for it. Whether they do anything about it, who knows? I don't, you know, it's Kato, Russia. I Kato, don't know. let me ask you, do you, do you have the physical energy to entertain five different women at one time? Isn't one enough? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> By coastal? Yeah. I mean, Kato, I mean, they're multiple. I, I could see Kato back in the day. You got Orange County. You got the Valley, maybe Santa Barbara, uh, well, downtown yeah, LA. Well, you know, my, my wife loves to make uh, love 14 times a day. And I just say, <laughs> thank God I've got a lot of friends. No, I'm kidding, honey. I am just kidding. It's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, but five families? Come on. I mean, juggling five women is one thing, but five families? <laughs> yeah. It, I, and obviously, it started catching up to him. Uh, yeah. It's funny, too, because uh, there's certain interviews during the documentary. You, you can see he's flustered. You can see he doesn't have yeah. answers to certain questions. When the world is caving in yeah. uh, on, on a person, you see the world caving in on him. True. And it, you can just feel it. And it, it comes through your TV. Mm -hmm. When you're watching, you're going, oh, I can. This guy is yeah. it's, it's coming. Out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to climax to this guy. He's just going to get caught. It's, it's going to be incredible. But, not in jail, though. Yeah. It's but not, he's also the guy, too, that you get the vibe that he's just got the ultimate confidence that he can get out of anything. Like, still, I wonder what what his background is where it's led to that, because this guy's not afraid of anything. You know, no. it's like it's like when you when you have a house of cards, like take a Bernie Madoff, for instance, yep. when he's getting into his late 60s, 70s, he knows it's going to end someday. Yeah. Right. But he's thinking, OK, I had 30 years of living the high life, private jets, got the money stashed away. Everybody's taken care of. I'll, I'll deal with the humiliation and die in jail, probably. But he was Paulo was in his 50s. Right. And, and and there's no way you can maintain this forever. So he had to know a sliver of his his brain had to tell him that it was ending someday, but he didn't care. Right. And he just yeah. and he kept doubling down. That's the thing that's so yeah. amazing. I think to this day, he still thinks somehow he's going to wriggle out of it. He's still trying. You know, he still thinks mm -hmm. he's invincible. That's why he's on Italian mm -hmm. TV, you know, ranting and raving and basically doing a smear mm -hmm. campaign now against me and all the other women. Um, he's just he's a he's a classic narcissist, you know. He's, yeah. And he's, but he's on a cruise ship now. So. It's, yeah, well, oh, so uh, you know, when you walk in the the courtroom, I know it's a it's a uh, a while ago, yeah. but you you're going back and forth. You're on, you know, you're paying for your own ticket to go back and forth. Um, are you trying to make eye contact with him? And are the other people and the other families that the uh, uh, the people that have passed away are they with? They know who you are, and are you guys kind of a team sitting there? Um. Only one of the family members came at the very end, and that was the widow of his, the very first patient to get this artificial trachea. And that was one of the most heartbreaking days in court. I mean, she was crying on the stand. I actually started crying. It was, it was gut wrenching to listen to. Right. Um, what did happen is the whistleblowers, the Swedish whistleblowers, the doctors who, who blew this whole thing open after they testified, they were able to come and sit in the courtroom. And so we would all be <clears> sitting together. 
Mm-hmm. And we, we've become good friends. And then there's also the, the Swedish documentary producer who did the scathing documentary on him. So sometimes mm-hmm. it was funny in court because we'd all be sitting together and Apollo would look over our way and I would think this must be his worst nightmare. You know, all of us just lined up looking at him. But he, that first time in court in 2022, he refused to look at me. He just wouldn't make eye contact with me. And mm-hmm. It was court for a month. So I spent some days just staring at him court thinking, you know, come on, asshole, look at me. But he didn't. Sure. But this last time in, um, I guess it was like eight months ago, the courtroom was much smaller, the appeals court. And last time he had a back door that he could come in and out of with his attorney. And this time he had to go in and out of the same door as everybody else. We came within, I mean, half an inch of each other repeatedly, many times. And this time he tried to look at me. But every time he tried to look at me, I just turn my head and I looked the Mm -hmm. other way and it was kind of my way of saying, you know, F you, you mean nothing to me. You didn't take me down and I don't care about you at all. I think you're disgusting, you know? Yeah. You have to kind of dehumanize him, right? I mean, you always have to like, he's just a bad memory to you. Um, I urge everybody who's watching this right now, we're focusing on the Netflix documentary with Benita, but when we had her on last year, go back and watch that because there's so much more to this story and it was all the lies that he told. And and that's a fascinating part of this, too. Um, we don't have to go into all of it, but man, you go back. I'll put the link in the description here so you can go back and watch the other episode because you want to hear that, too. But, Benita, you're, the profile for your life, I mean, you were behind the scenes for so many years, 17 years as a producer for Dateline, one of the top journalists. You know, you worked with Meredith Vieira. That's who you started with when you were going to do the story at, for the first time with Paulo, yeah. right? It was a story with Meredith. You worked with yeah. Matt Lauer and mm-hmm. Curry, all the superstars at NBC. So you're behind the scenes and probably perfectly content with that. And now your life is completely different. You're a star. I mean, people look to you. You are an inspiration to a lot of women. There's a lot of responsibility, you know, a lot of burden that probably comes with that. Plus you have a daughter and and everything else. So just talk about how, what this has done in your life. Um, Have you embraced this new role? Are you happy and content with it now? I have. I mean, it, it completely changed the trajectory of my life and my career very unexpectedly. I mean, initially, I thought my my only goal was to expose him and to put it out there. It didn't I wasn't wasn't about revenge. It wasn't about spite. It wasn't even about telling my own story. I just wanted the world to know that Dr. Paolo Maccarini is not who you think he is. And he's a fraud. And then let let the pieces fall where they may. So I was very surprised when it kind of morphed into this thing where women are reaching out to me all the time looking for my support, calling me an inspiration, calling me brave and courageous, mm-hmm. telling me that I've given them hope and I made them feel less alone, less stupid. Um, but that does kind of make it feel like it all makes sense, that maybe it happened to me for a reason. And I'm very yeah. passionate now about doing whatever I can to help at least educate, if not stop, um, people about victim shaming because there's way too much victim shaming that goes on. You know, right. people point the finger at the woman and why? You know, what what's the woman's crime? She fell in love. That's not a crime. She wanted to trust the person right. she loved. You know, that's not a crime. And so it is rewarding to be able to help women and talk about this. And um, I don't know exactly where it's all going now, but, you know, because I've refused to stop talking about this because there still hasn't been justice. You know, it's been both about helping other right. women and justice for his patients. And until he's actually sitting behind bars, there is no justice for his patients. Right. So, and, and having said that you, um, are an attractive woman. And I don't know your personal life if you're dating now, but if you are dating, are you completely staying away from men with an accent? Are you staying away from anybody with, uh, <laughs> I should, Benita, I should make him come over you, here. Uh, I, I, do hey, it. We hey, want to meet him. Benita, you uh, listen, hey, hey, get that other. Hey, hey, Benita, we do know the former head of the FBI's polygraph oh. division, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. We're friends with him. He was on our show but, four yeah. weeks ago. Um, you, oh, you, oh, you are. Oh, you're going to bring. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. He's at his house. I don't know if you can oh yeah, his headphones on. I might have to like because uh, I I also answered I answered a babe also, so it was confusing <laughs> to me. <laughs> Babe, got his headphones on. He's we've been we've been dating for about eleven months now. He's British, that's why it's funny. Um, but he's he's lovely. Yeah. His is he was he is he in the business of uh, no. uh documentaries and totally out of this. And he knew your story though, correct? You didn't um, when you first not, had a date. He didn't. Not when we first met. We we met. It's kind of a funny story. We met in Colombia in the immigration line. There was a two hour wait in the immigration line, and I was with this big group of girlfriends, and he was in front of us in line. Um, but the first night that we went out, yeah, he knew the story, and he was 
he's been great. He's been incredibly supportive and wasn't completely, you know, he didn't want to run away when he heard it. Um, cool. So, yeah. That's great. 11 months, of, it's, it's got to be good. That's quite the meet cute. I lose it. <laughs> An immigration line in the Colombian airport. Colombia. Where were you? Medellin? Um, Cartagena. Okay. Vacation? Yes. Okay. I didn't know Paulo had another family stash down there. Oh, God, no. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. That's that's so just... Okay. Come on. Use that journalist voice, right? Get over here now. <laughs> hey, hey, Benita, after the year, after the one year mark, that's when the men... They really have to come running. <laughs> so that's when you have them trained. While, while you're texting him or, or getting him to come by, does he uh, uh, does he deal with when you guys go out and uh, you're recognized? And uh, he he's like, oh, this is great. Uh, is it like people coming up for photos? Um, is it happening during the dinner? Does it happen you know, if you're at a bar anywhere, grocery you know, store? It's, it's I, so funny because he keeps saying, "When is it going to happen? When we're together?" It's it's ha it's has happened a lot since Netflix mm -hmm. came out, but we've never been together. And he's kind of waiting. I don't know if he got it or not. Um, okay, I'm going yeah. to physically get up and get him if you want to meet Do you? Him. Well, um, if he wants to come say hi, that's great. Anything else? What? So what's your life like now? A lot of promotion, right? Been doing a lot of is. interviews? Yeah. Oh, uh, da, da, da. Da, da, da. Hello, sir. <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> hey, by the way. You have to be able to, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I I just I just talked to the Pope. If you guys end, end up getting married, he is available. I got him. I got him on standby. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the Pope's engineer, by the way. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. I fixed. Fix I'm Cato. I fixed. My name is Cato. The Pope Mobile. Yeah. The, you know I what? I saw that. I saw the Pope Mobile one time, and he's got that bumper sticker. It says. <laughs> if you, if you're a sinner, dial. He's got this whole bumper sticker thing. Ask me how to rot in hell. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's thing. Thank what is your name? Benita, introduce him. My name is Martin. Martin, how are you? Tom um, Zenner, the the one and only Cato Kalen hey, over here. Martin, hi, nice, a pleasure hi, to meet you. You've got hi, a Kato. wonderful, wonderful person. You're Martin, with. do you remember the OJ saga, the OJ trial in America back in 1994, 95? No, he didn't that? play in the UK. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Cato was. Uh, a big part of that. I was I was no, a witness I, in that, but now I've got this show. And yeah. uh, but congratulations, uh, you're a beautiful couple. Hey, you I, guys, I mean, yeah. why did, I'm sure on your travels when you come out to LA, make sure you call us. I mean, we were so appreciative of Benita telling her story on our show twice now. We're big fans. I thought the Netflix documentary was unbelievable. From your perspective, Martin, what was it like watching that? And just like, you know, your relationship is still fairly young, 11 months, and I'm not sure exactly when they taped that, but boy, you see her whole life unfold in front of you with the rest of the world. What was that like? Well, I'd seen some of the other documentaries that, that Benita has been part of, but it, it is surreal, right? It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I know obviously Benita is a very different person than uh, all those crazy experiences she's had in the past, but she's a wonderful, kind, uh, loving person. So I'm like, lucky to uh, have her in my life. She's, she's gorgeous. Well, Benita, he's a cool dude. If he like left yeah. what he was doing and came over and said, hi, that's awesome. Hey, I was working, you, watching Ricky Gervais, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love that. I gotta go back. He's you, good. Hey, why you, wasn't he hosting the the Golden Globes the other night? I yeah, oh. exactly. Can, my my last question is to ask uh, Martin. Answer this honestly, if you can. If you guys uh, together went on a cruise, and on the cruise, you happen to have Doctor Paulo there, what would you do uh, if he was the medical doctor? Oh, throw overboard or no? <laughs> but I think I think but he's done himself enough damage. He doesn't need uh, <laughs> yeah. anybody else to to help him with that. Yeah, that's great. I know the story is just unbelievable. I'm glad you two found each other. That's awesome. And I'm serious. If you're in LA, call us. It'd be great Sounds to great. see. You. We'll take you up on that. Uh, all right, Mr. Martin. A pleasure. A pleasure to yeah, talk to you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Take care, Benita. That was awesome. Thank you. Well, that's got to I hope that I hope that's a first. I hope that was a first, Benita. That the first time Martin on a podcast, he's it's on ours. The first anywhere. You just outed him. And nobody's seen him. Nobody knows his name. So, hey, Benita. But you know, just on a personal note, I mean, I can just sense. I mean, having somebody that has a sense of humor like he does has to be so therapeutic for you. Yeah. There's been a lot of heavy shit in your life for the last, yeah. you know, ten years. Really, yeah. a lot, and so much of it under the microscope. Yeah, right. Exactly. So to have someone like that that doesn't judge, that is cool and supportive and funny. What more yeah. could you ask for, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. That that was the, un, you know, you had to go through what you had to go through to actually meet Martin. So yeah. congrats to that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and, and like I said, you're, you're therapeutic to so many other people. 
and your story is, is it's inspiration and what you went through and other people they didn't go through to the degree that you did but uh obviously you answer fan letters and you you take you know like I said, you're an inspiration to so many people and I think it's wonderful. And my Thank wife you. saw the documentary and I, I know her reaction. And so it's, uh, I'm sure that's the same reaction for many, many, yeah. many people. Hey, yeah, Benita, let, uh, you know, on a, on a, on a professional note too, you know, I spent so many years in TV. I worked for NBC. You worked for NBC for 17 years. Aren't you glad yeah. you're out of it? I mean, TV has yeah, changed honest, so much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's funny. People ask me if I would go back and even Martin asked me that. And I said, I have no desire to go back to that kind of life it was grueling too you know you the hours and the you never you never really had a life because yeah. breaking news happens all the time and you know holidays went out the window nights went out the window weekends went out the window so sure. no there i have great memories of it and there are a lot of things about it that were wonderful but i, w I wouldn't want to do it again no and it's not the same the business it's has changed so much and by the way yeah. you've got a brand now you don't need tv right. digital it's where it's at so I have one last question real quick. The the yeah. doctors at the Karolinska Institute, the ones that were the, the whistleblowers, yeah. are they still in, are they still with that institute? Uh, are, are, would no. the institute condemn I, them? I think one of them might still work for Karolinska. Um, the others have moved to different jobs. You know, they've all managed to land on their feet. But um, as you see in Bad Surgeon, and I actually didn't know that until I watched it, that one of them was close to suicide over all this. That's mm -hmm. how dark it got for Terrible. him. I mean, they went through hell, you know, they, mm -hmm. and they were so tenacious and they didn't give up and thank goodness they didn't, you know, um, and they didn't get discouraged, yep. but they, you know, Carolyn's could definitely did not do right by them and has a lot of, yeah. in my opinion, a lot of things to answer for. I, I'm sure they will too. Yep. Okay, so it's Bad Surgeon, the Paolo Macarini story on Netflix, three-part documentary dropped in November number one all over the world. We highly, highly recommend you it's, watch it's it. Terrific. It is unbelievable gripping, gripping television. And then go back and watch He Lied About Everything. You can find that everywhere too. That is it's another part of the story, which, yeah, true crime. Oh my God. And then you get into the nitty gritty of what this, here, let me just paraphrase real quick. He said the Pope was going to marry them. He said John Legend was going to be there, Elton John, the Clintons. Um, it was, was they're going to get married in a castle in Spain or, I, you know, in Italy. On and George on and Clooney on and on. And Lake Cuomo, George yeah. Clooney was involved in something. And the, like, the Benita, the, I remember the, I remember the dancing everything. lessons. Darling, oh God. I am, I am working on the two step right now, thinking of our love. Yeah. And, <laughs> Good Lord, he was there with somebody else. That. What it's a clown! It is. The, I hope he comes here. We'll punch him for you. Okay. Mm, he, that'd be good. He 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 started cameos before cameo was invented. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is my yeah. cameo sure, for right. you. A hundred dollars, Cam. Let me tell you, Benita. <laughs> of course, he never says the name, so it's yeah. a bad. Hey, Benita. Anything else you want to plug? Um, Follow just, you on social media, obviously. Yeah, if you want to get in contact me, with me, social media, Instagram, TikTok, it's Benita Alexander underscore official. And I do actually, I get a ton of messages, like sometimes hundreds a day, but I do actually read them. Um, I can't right. always respond sure. right away, but I do read them and I appreciate every single one of them. I mean, part of the hard part about going public is there are the haters and the trolls and that comes every time I go public and they're still there. But for every one of those, there's a hundred plus beautiful, oh, yeah, you... en encouraging, supportive messages. And they, I re they, they really touch me. So, you know, uh, even if I only respond with a heart, you know, I, each one means something to me. I follow you on Instagram. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. And you've taken over TikTok too. Nice job. <laughs> All right, Benita, say goodbye to Martin for us. Thank you. I will. Let's stay in, let's Thanks, stay in touch. Great yes. job. Congrats. Thank you. All right. Well, tell you what, um, I didn't know what to expect when I watched that show. Right. Because I thought, what more could they say? What more could we learn about this story? But the thing that did strike me and she talked about it at the very end of the interview was that the whistleblowers, those doctors that worked with him. Could you imagine? Yeah. What that was the best part how of it. Humiliating. And the families. And because there's things I didn't know that he had done. Yeah. And how he convinced the, the one woman to to marry him, have a child after basically the, <laughs> the son passed away from his yeah. bogus operation operation yep. it was just oh it's so compelling i you, you watch the first one and you I, automatically you got to watch the whole thing yeah you, you got to you're sucked in it's one of those yeah. things where and then netflix is so good because that next one is starting so quickly even if you want to go to bed and it's 1 30 in the morning yeah. you can't because they get you they get you by the way i just binged the hot thing on netflix right now called um fool me once incredible it's 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 so good eight-part series harlan coben okay harlan coben 
famous author. I got to tell you one funny Harlan Coben story. So he's big time, right? So he's, he has like a seven show deal with mm -hmm. Netflix. And this is the biggest thing on Netflix right now. It's called Fool Me Once. It's, there isn't one scene when you watch this that's wasted. The it's, move, it's the, scripted? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. And the story's moving at, it's so twisty and so good. So he was one of my favorite authors for years. He used to have this series where he, you know, some lighter fiction when he first started off with his agent named Myron Bolitar. He was a sports agent that played basketball at Duke and got his knee blown out. And then he segued into these more serious novels. And I loved the guy, right? I thought he was awesome. So I was in touch with him communicating with him and say, hey, if you're ever out, you know, come say hi. So he did. And so he was flying in to Phoenix. This was when I was living in Phoenix at the time. And Sean and I had, hadn't been married long, maybe a year, maybe less than a year. So we had gone out to dinner that night to an Italian restaurant, just the two of us before kids. And I crushed this big bowl of pasta called Jenny's Penny. Okay. This is about six o'clock. Destroyed it. It's so yeah. good. It's still my favorite dish to this day. Um, and then at about seven o'clock, he calls and he goes, hey, I'm, I'm in town. You want to want to get together? So I picked him up at the airport and he goes, have you eaten? I go, no, 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 no not really. And he goes, I'm starving. So we went to the Cheesecake Factory. It yeah. was like the only place open. And then I proceeded to destroy an entire chicken marsala, which has three chicken breasts in it. It's probably made for five people. Uh -huh. I ate that whole bowl of pasta and another one. And I acted like I There's hadn't eaten all night. <laughs> have you ever done that? No, I haven't. <laughs> It's a lot of food, Kato. I think I'm still digesting it. This and, is like and he has a series on Netflix now, huh? Oh, it's so good. Let's get him on. Tell Phoebe. Let's get him on. Tell our show. Phoebe, you and I, or yeah. you and her, you you, you got to watch it, Kato. It's really really good. All right, okay. So we got NFL playoffs starting this week. The Packers are in. I'm happy for you. Good for you. I'm so happy. Let's yeah. let, let them. Let's them. You know what? They'll be a big surprise. They might do it. They might. Youngest you team too. Hey. Youngest team. He's uh, he's done better than Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers his first year. So Doing I'm good, and I'm love I'm loving the Aaron Rodgers McAfee thing. They get that going week by oh, week. Yeah, it's so the, good. Kimmel, I love that calling out the ESPN guys and Kimmel. It's classic. All right, hey, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell other people about it. Go back and watch some past episodes, including the one Benito was on last yeah. year. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So. Cato, have a great week, buddy. One Degree of Scandalous on YouTube, so subscribe. You'll love the show. You will. Okay, thanks, everybody. For Cato, I'm Tom Zenner. We'll see you next week.